Morning guys, Mon here. Today I want to talk about my League starter character and go a little bit deeper in how the character works, what the current plan for it is, how much I have done and whatever you need to know. So in the background we are seeing the current state of the character in a tier 16 map, just clearing my current endgame setup for maps. Um, I have done some upgrades since then, but the updates will be reflected in the path of building I will post below. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments, but let's get started with the build. So the gist of the build is to cast a lot of sparks. We do that by using an Arcanist brand setup, which gets triggered by brand recall and then increase the duration of everything so that it's fairly smooth. The thing about Arcanist Brand and Brand Recall on the Saboteur is that the trigger bots trigger the Brand Recall, which then triggers Arcanist Brand twice, which then triggers Spark twice, which means from every recall we gain four Spark casts, and we have seven Arcanist Brands, which means every recall casts Spark 28 times. Now we scale the duration to like five seconds, and we have about two and a half thousand sparks on the screen because every time spark gets cast it um, puts out like 14 projectiles due to us running spark of the nova so the idea is to just flood the screen with sparks they don't deal like infinite damage but enough to clear comfortably i have cleared up to tier 16 in a four link um, and even have done an invitation of the um how are they called the synthesis bosses um on a four link that fight is on my channel you can find it fairly easily it should be my last video before this one um so a four link was sufficient f to run up to tier 16 maps um, however, I did mostly farm tier 9s for Breach, Delirium and Jun because the falling was not like feeling all that great in tier 16, obviously. But now that I am running a tier uh, 16 with a 6 link, the build feels very, very good. It can be a little laggy due to the amount of projectiles, but overall the feeling is very good. It is somewhat tanky, the damage is great, and yeah, it feels a little bit like an auto bomber due to the Arcanist brands lasting for a very long duration due to our duration stacking and yeah that's what the build currently looks like the plan with the character currently is to farm the voice of the storm amulet which gives another like 25 percent more damage and overall to just make better items like oh, the character doesn't wear like insane pieces aside from maybe the body armor or something so overall this gear is very accessible if you want to get this character in trade one of the most important pieces would be the helmet and especially with the corruption which is like five chaos in trade i have checked that recently it is um very very strong the corruption due to leech being fairly inaccessible for um like, like life leech on spells but the helmet does that and yeah should pick one of those up if you want to play the character then the idea of the offensive scaling as i said is the triggering of a uh, like a lot of sparks then we want duration scaling projector speed scaling we are running low life with pain attunement we don't use crit but you could go crit on a very high budget with um, like some different pieces, but I won't go into that here. Then we get damage from like the Voice of the Storms, which makes non-critical damage lucky with lightning uh, damage. And we use the Mine Auras, which like give 150% increased damage taken on the enemy, which is just a lot of increased damage taken. It's just very, very strong. We also use a double trigger wand, which I will show in a moment. The wand gives us a second brand recall, which triggers at about a third or a little faster of the rate of our normal recall, which means that the 
craft and one gem socket gives us another like 30 to 40 percent more damage which is very much the defense from the character comes from mind over matter eldritch battery we have life and energy shield leech we have instant leech through the mastery we have over leech we have recoup why um i have specced out of recoup a little bit by now but overall yeah we just have a lot of recovery. We also gain a lot of regen and endurance charges from Warcry. We run Petrified Blood and we have a lot of evasion rating, which gets increased by scaling intelligence due to a mastery. So overall, it's just a build that feels very nice due to the um, main ideas of the build, like duration, scaling, damage and um, utility and quality of life it's just a very nice playstyle that in itself is just very smooth but let's take a closer look at the gear the gear pieces i am using right now is a fairly decent wand with the trigger craft currently am working on a new wand but i failed in a null i had tier one hybrid spell damage on it as well but i need an open suffix so right now I'm looking for the Ferric Wolf Alpha, which makes um, a suffix to a prefix so that we can use the trigger wand. This one will give like 8 or 10% more damage as well. Um, we are running private league, so I don't have access to all the cool trade stuff. Then the body armor is just a very big evasion energy shield hybrid. You need a lot of energy shield on your body to have like 2k plus energy shield, which is very much recommended. I would in a perfect world go for like two and a half thousand life and three thousand energy shield to have smooth casts and everything the body arm and uh, the gloves slot gives um, projectile pierce two times like in the implicit and the explicit i later on will likely change to mostly the implicit because the non vascal damage is so good but it might be difficult in the private league to get a very strong glove piece with the projectile pierce so i don't know yet but these have to be upgraded at some point we're running a stitchion vice with a fairly generic hypnotic eye in we run boots with onslaught onslaught is pretty good on the build but not mandatory just makes it a little faster put down the Agnes prince faster but the damage does not scale with car speed itself, so it's not mandatory. The rings just give stats and reduce mana costs. Reduce mana cost is fairly helpful due to us having like very, very high mana cost. The life cost only is here when I'm not low life, so we usually only have the mana cost. Um, it still is a lot, so you want some reduction here and there to make it possible to cast it because you have to pay for 28 casts per trigger which is a lot um, so that's why we are running Val Clarity as well but we go into the games in a moment and then we're running a shield with plus one lightning an amulet with plus one lightning until we have the voice of the storm and the honor home the honor home is one extremely important piece for the character it gives reduced mana cost of skills and plus two to gems which applies to brand recall automation enhance and empower when we have one petrified blood will have to leave the slot later on when i have an empower which gives like another 24 percent 20 32 like 40 percent uh cooldown recovery due to the levels of brand recall which is very very strong a lot of damage comes from empower here and yeah that's pretty much the gear pieces we run a life flask evasion flasks movement speed flasks and uh, an armor flask i will likely change this one to be a chaos resistance flask um due to armor not being too helpful uh, because we only have the 1.5k from the flask um, it's nice against chip damage but we don't really care about chip damage a lot and my curse resistance is <laughs> we better don't talk about that but from the gems i am using spark of the nova this one just gives a lot of projectiles which helps with um, additional hits in smaller or wider areas we run arcanist brand quality here is not mandatory it's just 21 arcanist brand is very strong but quality is 
just nice to have but doesn't really do much for us because the activation re frequency only works when it's attached to an enemy and we don't really need it attached because it's recalled all the time anyways. We are running Awakened Added Lightning. This one is very strong because it gives plus one level as well. Awakened Lightning Penetration. This one is very, very good because at level five, it also gives exposure. We run Increased Duration, which increases the duration of the sparks, which lets us hit about 50% more. So this on bosses counts as more or less 50% more damage, maybe 30%. It's a very good support because we get more hits. In wider areas, we like the sparks might fizzle and this doesn't do a lot, but the duration also applies to Arcanist Brand, which makes our Arcanist Brand last like 14 seconds unattached, which is very, very nice for the playstyle. And then we add Energy Leech. This is fairly versatile. If you have enough damage, you don't need the Energy Leech support because we get Energy Leech from the tree. So you could put a better support here, but I like Energy Leech in the current state of the character but this one is fairly free to use the other ones are very set in stone because they are just too good for the character then we are running a conductivity curse i was running sniper's mark for quite a while but due to the mines applying increased damage to the enemies sniper's mark isn't all that great and conductivity is a much better curse here then we've got a herald of thunder and arrogance support if you have a lot of reservation stuff you could um, even use a bigger aura here because Herald of Thunder isn't doing a lot for the build. If you check out the path of building here, Herald of Thunder is only giving like 5% or something. Yeah, 5.5% damage. So you might want to swap this to a better aura, but I didn't find one I wanted to use yet because there isn't a whole lot of options with below 30% reservation. You could go with Discipline if you have more Reservation Efficiency. But it's very important to not have above 50%. You need like 94 point something Reservation so that it does allow for Overleach to happen. Then we have the Enhance Automation Brand Recall and Power Setup in the Helmet later on with Petrified Blood. We have Clarity, Wrath, Divine Blessing, Increased Duration. The Clarity is only used for Wild Clarity which currently lasts for 24 seconds and gives 33% seconds of soul gain prevention for the damage boost of the gloves. We are using a grace. I am thinking about changing the character to armor based instead of evasion based because the grace is the only gem that currently is needed for dexterity aside from enhance. So we could go down like a hundred decks if we didn't have grace. We could also use a lower grace, like you would lose like 1k evasion nearly per level of grace. But if you don't have enough dexterity, you could, could go down like 2, 3, 4 levels on it and it wouldn't feel too bad. Um, aside from that, we have a flame dash and that's pretty much the setup. I'm missing something here. We run call to arms. Endurance Cry. That's the last setup I'm using. Just on all the time, triggers every five seconds and gives him boost of life regeneration and endurance charges if enemies are nearby. Then we have the automation support, which triggers the sparks. But we don't want to have the sound here all the time. For the skill tree, this one is fairly straightforward. We need duration here. We need the mine mastery here and the increased duration for mine is very good as well. So we want to go down here. We want a cluster jewel setup and I've chosen this one due to being <laughs> due to having elemental damage here over mana here. Later on I might go for a second cluster setup and ditch these nodes when I have some more levels. Currently we are at 94. Could get rid of might and uh, alacrity as well. So we have some more nodes for another cluster. You want the brand nodes, these are mandatory because you need brand equity for two additional brands, the mastery for two additional brands and another mastery slot for 50% for cooldown recovery. This is just too much damage um, to not use it, so you have to use it pretty much. 
Um, then we run mind over matter and pain attunement, so this path is just set in stone more or less. Also I'm running ghost dance, we currently have 15k evasion without flasks and 30k with flasks, so this gives a nice energy shield recovery as well. Then we run these lightning nodes for the penetration. We have a scintillating idea and storm drinker here for leech and a lot of penetration and Doyani's lesson. If you don't have the helmet corruption and don't have Doyani's lesson, you might have problems with life recovery. So you might have to use the recoup nodes here and or here. I was using this, this and this, all three at some point in different setups of the character, depending where I was pathing and stuff. And yeah, the rest of the nodes are life or energy shield or hybrid nodes for evasion and energy shield. Let's take a look if we have different uh, important masteries. We have the life masteries for life and increased life. We have instant leech. This one is very important to have the recovery for the casts. We have chaos damage does not bypass energy shield. It's fairly important due to um, energy shield not using mind over meta. If it does bypass energy shield, it just goes straight into life and kills us. This currently is like the most dangerous thing for the character with the minus chaos resistance and mind over meta not working. So chaos resistance very... I, I will have to get some chaos resistance at some point. And then the mastery here, evasion energy shield mastery, allows us to swoop over the evasion scaling from if uh, from dexterity to intelligence which um gives us like 3000 evasion rating and even more if we had more intelligence so this is a very very strong mastery node with multiple thousands of evasion rating i think that well and elemental overload obviously because we are not running crit and yeah, I think that pretty much sums up the character. For the Ascendancy, we run Trigger Bots, Demolition Specialist, like Clock Bots for cooldown, and Born in the Shadows. I'd go with Perfect Crime, like Clockwork, Born in the Shadows, and then Demolition Specialist, because the mines, like, you don't really care about them too early. You want them later on, but yeah, it's not too important. For the mines, it also is fairly important that the Stormblast mines gets the quality because it makes them 30% better. But yeah, I think that's it for the character. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will gladly answer any questions, anything upcoming. If you have any ideas on how to improve the character, any items, any mods I have missed, any skill tree ideas, feel free to let me know in the comments and see you in the next time.